My name is uh, okay, I have many names. My name is David Alpha Kasaine. I am married to one wife. She has uh, <laughs> she has refused to come up with me. Mona Bishop. Uh, on public demand, let me, let me bring my wife. <laughs> on the demand of the masses, please greet the church. Buona asifiwe. Asifiwe tena. Glad to see us all on this day. I hope you're all expectant to receive of the Lord, yeah? Okay. Glory. I am my father's son. Yes, Bishop. <laughs> um, yes, my name is David Alpha Kasaine, and I'm a brother in this church. Uh, I was told that uh, during Men's Week, ever since I was grafted into this church, because I married into deliverance, so I was grafted. <laughs> ever since I was grafted into this church, they have not seen me. Today they wanted to see me to represent the masses of the men. Men are who? Are who? You may have your seats. Yeah, I'm so humbled and honored to be here today uh, to just share one or two things as the, the Spirit of the Lord has laid it in my heart. Hallelujah. Uh, in, in 20. Uh, first of all, what we've just done is a very prophetic act. Uh, the, the taking of the body of Christ. Because in Revelation 19.10, Revelation 19.10, you see that uh, it says, let me just read for you, uh, where John the Revelator was uh, talking to the angel. He said, then the angel said, uh, from 9, the angel said to me, blessed are those who invite the marriage of the, of the Lamb. Uh, and he said to me, Father, these are the true and exact words of God. Then I fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But he stopped me and said, uh, he said to me, you must not do that. I am, I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers and sisters who have and hold the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, worship God alone. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. His life and teaching is the heart of prophecy. The reason why you're not seeing those other two parts is because I'm reading from the Amplified. Hallelujah. So uh, the topic I was given was uh, words of our lives. I'm a very interactive uh, minister. So hallelujah, ama yes, from time to time. Amen? Uh, church is more interactive than it is just listening. For we are living beings. Amen? We are living so we, we've been reading from Genesis 26, but I highlighted some parts. Uh, Genesis 26, 2 to 3, and Genesis 26, 24, 25. Uh, yes. Uh, the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Stay in the land of which I will tell you. Then let's see 26, 24, 25. See, the Lord appeared to, to him. The Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bless you and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. You have seen two times, two places where God has appeared to. Isaac. And he has told him, do not be afraid for I am with you. And you know, every place where he went, even Bathsheba, where he settled, you, you can see that uh, every well that he digs, he gets water, yes? And then maybe he quarrels with the people there or he, they disagree and then he leaves again. Eh? 
And then, uh, because the first part up of Jew, he, God told him, just stay here temporarily. But we see where he, in Bathsheba, where he dug the last well, he also erected an altar. Amen? He also erected. Every time we saw, uh, you know, in the, in the Bible, our forefathers, wherever they erected an altar, it means that they had encountered God. Hallelujah. We are together. So, I've been, in, since 2018, I've been tracking. Uh, I've been trying to track. Even before I came to Deliverance, I've been trying to track the fathers of faith in our land. I have been able to meet a few. And uh, there's something that is very unique with each and every one of them. And that is their encounters with God. Hallelujah. I remember there's a time I was in Kikuyu. I met some, I wouldn't say old lady because uh, we are young in Christ Jesus. And this lady was telling me uh, about our, our bishop, our father here. So we were just having conversation. Uh, she was talking to me about the, um, the lady from Banana. Do you know her? the one who was imparted uh, by Catherine Kuhlman. Then she came to Kenya and she worked in a lot of miracles. I'm trying to, um, to remember the name, but it is what? Margaret, yes. Margaret or Banana. That's what they used to call her. So there was a lady in her ministry who knew Bishop. And uh, <laughs> she was telling me, which, aliniuliza na kikui, wewe wakanitha, unajua kikui na nipotea. We were in which church are you from? At least I know what she was asking. And she, I, told, I told her I'm from Deliverance, Zimmerman. I can hear me, where was Bishop Jimmy? They come and be yes, I am from Bishop Jimmy's church. And she told me, I know your bishop. When he was a young man, they had a group called the Gorillas for Christ. I didn't even know there was something like that. And he told me, if you are wise, she told me, if you are wise, out of his loins, you will touch something. Then I had just gotten married to Ibo. And it was exciting to meet a father in the land. And you know, you know, fathers are very gentle and loving. So when she told me that, I came and looked for Bishop and I was like, I want to serve in protocol. He did not know what I was looking for. <laughs> so Bishop and mom, because her mom was the one who was, hey, even tomorrow you can, let me connect you to Betha. So them, they were very uh, warm. But I knew some, I was looking for something. So every time I go to Bishop's office, I collect him, bring his book there, and take, it, and take him back to the office, he says, you are blessed. Let me tell you, for the past one year, my life has just been going up, up, why am I telling you this? You, we've seen there that God said he will bless Isaac because of Abraham. I. It is, it is me, me, this is what I, I believe. It is pride for you to leave this place, go to the mountain, seeking something that is in Bishop, our father. How do you live here? Go to Cataloni. How do you live here? Go to Heaven's Gate. And I'm not saying it is bad. Please go. But seeking for something that has already been availed. All you need to go is just say, bless me and you believe. This, this our kingdom is a kingdom of faith. Hallelujah. So I have been consistent. Like even today I wanted to go and collect his book by Pastor Milia Mekata. I was telling him I'm a servant leader. What do you mean? Because you don't get enough every day you receive. Amen? That was just far from the point. I was just trying to show you that there's something that our fathers went before us and got. That because of what they have received and walked in, we walk as the youths, people who are young like me, we are, we are doing ministry in an easy manner because we are riding on their shoulders. If they began by fighting for this gospel, we will not begin by fighting for this gospel. 
we are speaking off from where because we are you see if i put you on my shoulder you will see further than i can see because of the experiences and the and the territories that they encountered it is easy for us i've been going for missions for the past one month and it's been easy for people to be filled it's been easy for deliverance to take place it's been easy just because i sit under the message and i'm taught here i'm trying to show you that because of the things our forefathers had to counter it is easy for us it is very wrong for you to suffer while your father has it just to be wise to connect isaac dug the wells that were of his father and water there's something flowing out of our fathers and the reason i'm telling you this is because they have been having visions of something is coming like a revival but it looks different it's not going to be in the fivefold only it's going to be like the way scripture says that in the last day i'll pour out my spirit on all flesh and this old men will dream dreams young men will see visions and on my servants i'll pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy that is there's something coming and you cannot just sprout out of nowhere you need to start from somewhere hallelujah yes going back to the word so Jacob wrestles, uh, let's go to Genesis 32, 26, 28. Let me show you something else. Um, there we see that uh, Jacob, um, Jacob the trickster, we all know his story. He steals the Esau's birthright, who is his brother. Because you see his name, Jacob, is, means a, tri a trickster. So, uh, by the virtue of his name, he could not have received a blessing. The heavens could not have allowed Amen. And even the mother knew. And that's why she said, when she had Isaac telling um, Esau, go and prepare something for me so that I can bless you, she told him, it is your time. Amen. Um, we are, I'm, we're waiting for Genesis 32, 26. So, let us just continue. So we see, Jacob uh, still takes the birthright, He's blessed, and then he lives. But he lives in exile, even with a blessing. And, and, and even in exile, he still gets tricked. So even the name that he carried, the name that he carried, it will still work even outside there. So Laban tricks him, and he gives him the, not the lady they had agreed. Leah. Then... He works another seven years for Rachel, yes? And even after that, when he's to be released, Laban still wants to take his inheritance, you see? So when he's finally uh, uh, been able to acquire an inheritance and he's been released by Laban, he still has to not only meet his brother and face him, but also face himself. So he tells, he sends his wives and children ahead of him. And he says, let me face myself because I am tired. Something has to change. Amen. And we can see there where uh, he sleeps and uh, there's a staircase to heaven and a man like, uh, a man like uh, being comes and wrestles with him. And before daybreak, this man sees that Jacob has wrestled with him and he has prevail so he touches his hip and he dislocates him you see but Jacob still insists I will not leave you until you bless me then he asks him what is your name he says my name is Jacob which means trickster but the man uh, who represents the, the, both the natures of man and God because he says for you have wrestled with man and God and you have so you see he he says, what is your, he asks him, what is your name? And he says, my name is Jacob. And he says, no. From today, your name is Israel. Had to change his name for a situation to change. Hmm? You see what we are seeing there? Now let's come back to the 21st century, to where we are now today. 
That was just, uh, we are borrowing from there. In Romans 10, 9, in Romans 10, 9, we see that uh, the sinner, yes? Because if you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as God, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be? So even the sinner cannot come to God. You need, some, you need Christ to clothe you for you to be introduced. Yes? You need Christ. And that's why he sent his son. John 3.16, we see, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes, and that's why we say you believe in your heart and confess with your, you have been born. And when, when that act happens, you, 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 you become, you, you are taken up. And then you are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. You can see what I'm saying? Because in Hebrews 4.16 it says, God, God wants you to come. He says, come boldly to the, to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Therefore, let us, with, uh, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence and without fear so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Coming just at the moment. No, Adam was the first man, the organic man. He was, when God created Adam, he said everything that he, was, he had created was good. Can you say good? It means from the foundations of the earth, God knew what he created was good. But because man fell and he gave dominion to the devil, then we, 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 we came under a curse. Hallelujah. We came under. And that's why by one man's mistake, the world was condemned. But by another man's sacrifice and love, we were restored. That is the man, Jesus Christ. God had to make Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin for our sakes. So that he can descend into hell and take the keys of dominion from the devil and give it back to man. And that's why we are, the Bible says that whatever you lose in heaven is loosed on earth. Whatever you bind is. So the wells of our lives are the, are the wells of revelation. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the well that never tries. What you need is faith and those two things. Bro, for you to draw, you need faith and revelation. Because everything that pertains to life and godliness is in Christ. And the Bible tells us that we are seated in Christ Jesus. In So when we are approaching things, even matters life, we approach it from above. Looking. Are we together? We approach it from above looking in. In heaven, we don't have sickness. In heaven, we do not have poverty. Hallelujah. We do not have poverty in heaven. We do not have lack in heaven. Because the Bible says, and God will supply you all your needs according to his riches in in heaven there's no economy because the bible says you, a man shall lend to nations and you shall not how do we understand these things how do we understand these things Yes? If, if someone comes and reads you, uh, for example, like Daniel 9 there, around 2. If someone comes and uh, Daniel was trying to calculate the seasons and the times, and when he was calculating them, he saw uh, that the time that was promised had already passed. Hallelujah. It took an angel to appear to him and tell him, no, 
you have calculated the times and the seasons wrong. This is what this script means. Amen. Jesus is our source. Jesus is our well. Everything streams out of him. Let's check Ephesians 2, 6, 8. I know because of time, Sam, I'll just mention. In John 14, 6, by that act, Jesus, uh, yes, Ephesians 2, 6, 8, and Jesus raised us up together, made us sit together in there. In where? In Christ. So, you see, we are all born again. Hallelujah. It means there's a nature that now clothes us. Eh? In your spirit, there's more excitement than Club uh, Ganum Najoa Kenya, Zidimba FC, Kogalo, Nigani Nakwanga na Gormaya, Kogalo. You see, in your spirit, there's more excitement than the Champions League. In your spirit. Because the Bible says that with groanings, with you know what groanings are? They are not, they are not a language. And it's not only in us are there groanings, but even the Bible says that even the creation with groanings awaits for the manifestation of the sons of God. We have seen in John 14, 6 that after Jesus took, took us and sat us in heavenly places, he by grafting. You know that place where he says that uh, um, for you have been grafted. He says God is the vine dresser and I am the vine and you are the branches and you shall bear fruit. Yes? So you have been grafted. So your work is to? Is to bear fruits. Your work is to bear? Let's see, let's see Ephesians 5.16. Ephesians uh, six, uh, Ephesians 5, 16, 17, 18 there. That one is not uh, here. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, Luke 17. Therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. And not be drunk with wine in which is dis uh, dissipation but be filled with the See, we are spirit, body, and soul. Hallelujah. And we need the spirit of God to reside in us for, for the demystification of mysteries. Amen. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard. How does that happen? Once God has spoken, twice I have heard. If our lives on earth are to have any meaning, let us check. Uh, let me show you something before uh, Revelation four one. Revelation four one. After these things, I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with the, with me, saying, "Come up here, and I will show you." Things which must take place after this. Hallelujah. Immediately I was in the spirit. Let's, let's go just to. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. You've seen that part where he says that a trumpet spoke to me. Can you imagine? Uh, Let's check Psalms 48. Psalms 48, 12, 13. We are supposed to live from above coming in. Walk about Zion and go all around her. Count her towers. 
mark well her balway, balwax, consider her places that you may tell it to the generation following. There's also a place, I think, where Isaac, is it Isaac? Um, Isaac calls Esau and Jacob and blesses them for the times to come. Amen? I have been seeing, the reason I was telling you that testimony of our fathers, for you to be in ministry for over 40 years, there's something, there's somewhere you come from. For the Bible says we are not of this world. Even Jesus himself said, occupy till I come. For we are just but passers by. We are, so it means we are of another kingdom. And we should draw from that kingdom to affect our lives. So if we are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, we have the Holy Spirit the spirit of revelation, we have faith, then what can stop a man? I've told you that I have been seeing patterns of something that is coming, and I'm not calling it revival because we've had revival before. I can come close to call it an awakening, but it will affect both the old and the young. Whoever is alive in this generation, it will not choose a title. It will not choose a calling. It will choose an availed vessel, an open heart, a spirit that is willing. Because God looks for who he will send. Who can go for us? Whom shall we send? Kenya, for the longest time, has been in the corridors of rumors when it comes to revival. But now, we are going to be the ones at the tip of the spear. We're going to be the ones holding the battle axe. When I, when I, last year, we were somewhere with my wife, we were praying, and I was telling her, I saw in our church flames of fire burning the building consecrate sell out and God will use you amen even now as we speak we have the Holy Spirit moving in our midst the power of adoption into the kingdom of God Hallelujah. I, I hope I am making uh, sense. Let's see Ephesians 3.20 as we conclude. Yeah? Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works. In the beginning the earth was formless and desolate and the Holy Spirit moved over the face of the deep. In some versions it says he was fixated. Others it says he was brooding. We all know what brooding is, yes? He was incubating the earth. And when God started speaking, let there be, things happened by the power that works in The Bible says that those who are born of the Spirit are like the wind. They blow where they listeth. Gone are the days where the child of God is yoked by an altar. Gone are the days where a child of God is limited. The next generation, the church will be the solution to the world. The ideas for the economy will come from the church. The solution to health matters will come just because a man consecrated closed himself in his room and 
prayed came out with revelation. But for if all these things are hidden in Christ and we are seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly, because Jesus is sat on the right hand of God. So you can imagine that even in all these things, you see like uh, Psalms 24.1, let me show you we have been given dominion. We are not guessing this thing. Psalms 24.1. Hey, I'm quite serious. When I was here. Now to him who is, uh, no, Psalms 24.1. Psalms 24.1. The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. The world and those who dwell. The world and those who. There is nothing that is impossible to the one who believes. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to be. Let, you see this. Uh, check Romans 8.26. So that you don't feel like I'm telling you things that eh? they, they are here. It's just that we could not read everything. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be. Just don't just pray in the Spirit for you to ascend. Pray in the spirit and listen after. This is a channel of communication. Amen? This, you see, the devil was long defeated. That's why we are not concerned about him. Before, he didn't, like you see, the devil doesn't even understand what you talk with God when you're communing in the spirit. So he is as confused as he could be. Even the prophetic, he needs to wait for the word to be released for him to know. John 10 10, for the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you may have life and have it in abundance. So, moving forward, this, this, uh, the, the theme for the year is very prophetic. The wealth. The wealth. So that's why I began by showing you that let's not only start with the wealth that are here, but also remember that we have living wealth amongst us. If you want to accelerate, humble yourself, honor the gifts of God in our land, and you will be accelerated. Amen. I hope that you have a blessed Sunday. That is how I, we don't conclude, we will continue. We don't conclude. We may stand, we may stand. I worship you. And now, just as we're in that atmosphere, this, um, there's someone here who... Uh, you, your dreams have been taking a pattern of you know what you have your dreams have been taking a pattern of uh, ev every time something happens in your family someone has a dream and that dream sets the the trajectory of everyone in your life if you're here come so that the worship uh, the ministry team will pray with you in this atmosphere things will be shifted. You won't come here and go back again. A different. Hallelujah. Just come and the ministry team will minister to you. If you have any form of ailment, we have said that we are coming from a place where these things do not exist. Whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And what we lose is lost. 